When the Windrush arrived in 48, how many aboard could have guessed their fate? Rejection on doorsteps, a bitter heartbreaker, in their thin cotton suits, all the way from Jamaica. You'd heard about the snow, the rain and the smog, but not no blacks, no Irish or no dogs. Still you were strong, resolved to stand your ground, not pick up your bags and turn around. One family moved to Charlton for a brand new deal and brought up a son who refused to kneel. Selhurst Park, excited, his football league debut, facing the problems his parents both knew. From the midst of the terraces a monkey chant was Paul Elliott's first taste of a racist rant. But worse was to come than the fans at Crystal Palace, as some fans in the north screamed out their malice. Some fans had nothing but a hate message to send, remembered a supporter from the covered end. What I saw back then seemed so far-fetched. Nazi National Front, with their arms outstretched. But Paul played on, determined, no regrets, to spite those fans with their banana skin threats. From Charlton to Luton and then on to Villa, there were times when Paul's story read like a thriller. Abroad then to Pisa, he marked Maradona. For Paul, looking back now, this was an honour. To say it was better in Italy would have been a lie, as the fans in the south made his whole family cry. But Paul's mind was set, his destiny clear. No time was wasted in shedding a tear. But despite the cruel words of a racist fan, I went there as a boy, and I came out of it a man. Paul vowed to meet his challenge head on, so after Celtic in Glasgow, our man was soon gone. Some said Paul was foolish, this was much too risky. Glasgow's a vile cocktail of vodka and whiskey. Against Rangers he made his Scottish debut, as onto the pitch bananas they threw. An own goal, a bad back pass, a terrible nightmare. Abuse and misfortune came in more than his share. But old firm hatred couldn't make him fall. He kept his focus, his eyes on the ball. In the last minute, he scored a goal with his head. Don't you know the nutritional value of a banana, he said. Back to England and Chelsea, the ultimate test. Stamford Bridge was not a ground that you came to for a rest. Some of their supporters, high up in the stands, shouted abuse with vile, outstretched hands. But soon his name was the first they would cheer, and they were sad when injury took away his career. His playing days now over, he looked for a way of helping all colours come together to play. You can get it if you really want. You can get it if you really want. You can get As a match commentator, really he refused want. to bitch about things that had happened to him on the pitch. Using his fame to continue the fight, doing what he knew deep down was so right, taking the fight abroad for UEFA as colour should never bar who you can play for. Then back to the valley, a stage from his past, nailing his hopes to the addict's mast, seeking ways of sending to the dustbin, days when a player was judged by his skin. Born in 1964 in Lewisham, Paul grew up in the Morris Walk estate, Charlton, near to the Valley Football Ground. He attended Woodhill School. Paul joined Chancellor Athletic as a youth in 1976 and made his debut in 1981. He played for them until 1983 as a defender. Paul's next club was Luton Town. And then in 1985, he joined Aston Villa. In 1987, he joined Italian Serie A team Pisa. For a while, he was also on loan at Bari. In 1989, he transferred to Glasgow to play for Celtic. In his final season there, Paul was given the Scottish Professional Football Association's Scottish Footballer of the Year award. So
succeed at last. In 1991, he returned to London to play for Chelsea for £1.4 million. He scored on his debut. Paul also represented England at various levels, England schoolboys, England youth under 18s, England under 21s and at senior level he was the captain of the England B team. He was on the verge of a full breakthrough for the national side but his progress was halted by a serious knee injury. This was the result of a dangerous tackle from Liverpool's Dean Saunders. Paul then struggled to regain fitness and retired from playing in 1994. Since his playing career was cut short by the injury, Paul has worked as a TV commentator for Italian football and has used his footballing experiences to work as an ambassador for various anti-racism initiatives both in Britain and in Europe. These include UEFA, which stands for Union of European Football Associations, FAIR, which stands for Football Against Racism in Europe, the European Parliament, FIFPRO, which stands for Fédération Internationale des Footballeurs Professionnels, which is a World Football Union, he has been appointed as a special advisor for football by the CRE, which stands for Commission for Racial Equality. He is an ambassador for the newly formed CEHR, which stands for Commission for Equality and Human Rights, which is the European equivalent of the Commission for Racial Equality. He sits on the board of the PFA, which is the Professional Footballers Association, and on the Football Association Disciplinary Board. He is a patron of Show Racism, the Red Card, is an ambassador for Kick It Out, and is a trustee of Charlton Athletic Charitable Trust and one of the directors of the Charlton Athletic Community Scheme. He's also been running an independent football academy for young disadvantaged people since 1992 in Kent. Some of his graduates have gone on to play professionally for Charlton. He was awarded an MBE in 2003. Oh, my people. 